All right, let's get to some NCAA action here because the MOP, which means the most talented offensive player, why can't we just call it the MVP? I don't know. It's MOP in college basketball. Who is going to win that? It's no surprise. It's Zach Eady at the top of the leaderboard here at a plus 650 price. Donovan Klingen, the superstar, talented big man from UConn. He's at a 10 to 1 price, followed by Newton, Spencer, Love, Connect, and Davis. Let me just answer this right now. You look at, you're trying to say what makes the most sense here. Connecticut is a 210 favorite here to cut down the nets. Klingon is a plus 650 price. So if UConn wins and he wins it, it's better to take the MOP price. But there's a lot of talented players on that UConn team for me, Joe Ranieri. If I look and say mm-hmm. to myself, Purdue is a 6-1 to one price to win it all, plus 650 it is for Edie to win. I got to tell you right now, Purdue's not winning this if Edie is not playing well throughout the remaining parts of this tournament, which include the Final Four and the Final. So quite frankly, I actually would take Edie at a plus 650 price as opposed to Purdue at a 6-1 to price. How about you on that? Well, I mean, in, in, in theory, by the nature of what the award is, right, uh, mm-hmm. those other teams on there and those guys, there could be other guys on there that have monster games which still allow the team to advance. I am with you in Purdue. You don't have if Zach Eady doesn't show up or if he's not on the court or what they don't win. Uh, you know, I could make the argument with uh, you know North Carolina can make the argument with Tennessee, uh, with Arizona that there are other guys on that team that are capable of stepping up. This is a great team, but if it's like if you cut off the head of the snake, right? If you if Zach Eady ain't in the middle of it and part of it, you're not winning. So that alone to me makes him most valuable player is it not it does like imagine this let's just go to the final game right Purdue actually makes it and Edie goes for 11 points and nine rebounds I'll tell you right now Purdue just got blasted in the final game but if Donovan Klingen goes to the final game and he has 11 points and nine rebounds I'm like "Eh, you know what that's a decent game out of Klingen and UConn probably wins going away at that point so Edie by me far and away is if I'm just betting for an MOP if his team wins it he should get it but if we look at the other guys on the board right going down that list RJ Davis is really interesting to me for UNC because you take a look at their price point it's 13 to 1 for him to win MOP it's 16 to 1 one of those great guards that you have that can take a game over, he can do that and also give you those splash plays, hit multiple three-point shots, score a lot of points, let's just say 25-plus mm-hmm. points in a game. Also, Connect is a 16-to-1 price, and Tennessee is an 11-to-1 price to cut down the nets. When I want superstar talent, they're who I'm going to. Not granted, I know Baycott's a good performer, and Tennessee has some other good players, but for those teams to win championships, much like Edie for me, Joe, they got to be superstars, and there is some value on our J. Davis and Dalton Connect for me. No, there is because those are the go to guys there uh, in order to be able to get it done, you know. But we've seen, you know, uh, we, we've seen those two guys not have great games and yet those teams still won. Uh, it's going to be much harder from this point forward from the Sweet 16, given the level of competition. You're going to need your stars to show up here, right? But I don't think a team needs a bigger star to show up for any chance than like Purdue does. Cause I don't see Purdue beating Gonzaga. If Zach Eady doesn't, doesn't show up and is not available. Don't see it. Now, I think it's going to have to be, had, it's going to have to be him or bust. Have you ever had a, th- a process like, cause again, I, I, I don't think I'm going to be betting the MOP markets, but I'm telling you right now, that's going to be yeah. a tough beat. Like if you say to yourself, like, hey, look at this. I took Houston to win it all, who now sits at a 6-1 to price. It used to be a plus 550, so going in the opposite direction because how strong Connecticut is. Right. I can't imagine me waking up on that Tuesday morning going like, I knew Houston would win, but I bet Shed at a 10-1 to price here to win MOP. He doesn't win it. Right. I won no money, and Houston won it all. It's even, even the Edie thing. Like, it does make sense to take the plus 650 with Edie, but there is a chance, and a very small one, that Purdue can win, Edie plays okay, and somebody else steals the spotlight on that basketball team. There's got to be no worse beat than that going like, well, I bet the MOP, even though I picked the team to actually win it. Will you ever go down that path saying, you know what? I'm not going to pick the winner here, Joe, and take their price point. I'm just going to take the guy who's going to win the MOP. Well, you know, and now let me ask you, is it correlated to whoever wins the championship? It has to come from that team? Uh, you, yes. Or can... Who else can do the MOP? Who else could actually do that? I don't think well, that's even going to happen. Can it? 
Well, because it's for the whole tournament. It's not just, right? So, you you know, when you look at the body of work of what some of these guys have done, some of those guys on that list have already, um, you know, not had great games. So, you know, consistency matters too. And let's say, you know, you lose on a buzzer beater in a championship game, but yet you were the more, you, you know, your numbers and everything else that you did prior to that point were phenomenal. Are you not giving it to a guy uh, because he didn't win, uh, I, I don't know. But Zach Eady feels like that's a kind of guy that can dominate everything and then gets beat by a last-second buzzer beater. Or oh, like, ah, he blew. He's terrible. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. If it's correlated to the winner, if it's Houston, is it Sheet or is it LJ Cry? Uh, that's the think- other problem that we have. I got to tell you this on this one, which makes it interesting, too, because it is a Final Four award, but so many times the people voting on it have different criteria, right, Joe? And I bring this up for good reason, because we see the NFL awards all the time, like, well, what actually is a comeback player? If there's 100 people voting, you might have 75 different out of the 100. Like, oh, I don't think it's that. I think it's this. Well, I don't think you actually had to play last year, or if you had a medical emergency on the right. field and you came back, that's comeback player, not if you actually make any tackles or have a big impact. And the reason I bring that up is you're going to get some people voting on a Final Four award that go, well, hold on now. Zeki was unbelievable up to the Final Four and then was very Absolutely average in the correct. Final Four. But he, but he's their best player. Let's just give it to him correct. anyway. We see it all the time in the MVP of the Super correct. Bowl. Like, well, he didn't have a great game. Somebody else had a little bit better game, but you're not going to give it to Patrick Mahomes. So there is a thought process behind that, which, again, leaves it up to subjectivity. Influence. The one thing that's not up to subjectivity is if Houston wins yep. it, I know I just cashed my ticket. I don't want to wait five minutes after the game. Like, they better give it to Shed. They better give it to Shed. Oh, no, they gave it to somebody else who had an unbelievable Sweet 16 when that's not even factored into the Final Four. Yes, but the influence of that, because you can't unsee and know what you know, and the perception is whether he's actually dominating or not, you – it's already dominating, and that's the whole thing. So what they do leading up into the Final Four is absolutely going to influence how they vote in that. Uh, and then you got to worry, because each team, I think, has two guys that are capable of winning that if it's just into the Final Four. We see it all the time with these committees where they come out mm-hmm. after the brackets are released and they talk to us like, this guy just sounds like an idiot right now. Well, that's who's actually going to be voting right. on your – you put hard money on. Make sure you Correct. just keep it the champion here, people.